Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux. And for those of you who don't know Arch Linux, it's a pretty minimal, lightweight distribution that you can install on your compu uh, computer. It's I don't use Arch Linux personally, I use Void Linux, but for the longest time I used to use it. And it was, it used to be a, or I don't say it used to be, but when I used it, I loved it. It was a great distribution, but I liked Void Linux more because it was a lot more simple and lightweight, but I think a lot of you would definitely love Arch Linux. So I'm going to be showing you today how to install it because it has some great features, some an amazing package manager and pack, packaging system. Pac-Man, the package manager is great, but I'm going to be showing you how to install it. So first things first, you're going to, you're going to go ahead and actually download it. And you can go to the download page and they have lots of ways you can actually download Arch Linux, but I already have the uh, live image download. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, VirtualBox. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to create a new um, image called Arch Linux. And it's so popular that even VirtualBox has a selection just for Arch Linux, so I should that should probably show you how much popularity it's gained over the years. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a custom folder. There we go, and I'm gonna give it eight. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go eight gigs of RAM. And mm, keep on going. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very generous like I was last time when I installed Void Linux and just give it twenty gigs. Just why not? I have I have so much space on my hard drive, it's insane. <laughs> but there we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh go ahead and oh give it two cores. So I just do this just to give it a little bit of a speed up the virtual machine a little bit. But yeah, give it video memory and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the disk image. So uh, if you're doing this on the physical machine, you would of course flash this to your USB drive and then put the USB drive into your computer or whatever, whatever medium you use. It could be a USB drive, SD card, CD, floppy disk if you really go for that, but <laughs> it won't, our internet won't fit in a floppy disk. Um, really any removable medium and you can boot off of that. So this this is just VirtualBox simulating that. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, Arch Linux. There we go, and make it attached. Okay, so I can go ahead and start the machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this window, and you can see it's boot up to Arch Linux. Um, go ahead and just boot normally. It's gonna take a moment. Although, like I said, I gave, you know, the virtual machine a decent, decent amount of resources. Uh, it's still on my hard drive and my hard drive isn't, isn't the, the fastest thing on the planet. So it's going to take a second to boot up, but it should boot up relatively quickly compared to things like Windows. There we go. Okay. So we are in the Arch Linux installation. Get rid of that. Um, and you may notice one thing, um, that you are put into a command prompt, just like Void Linux. But the difference is that Arch Linux does not give you a um, installer or anything like that. You have to install it yourself. It does give you a few tools to help you install the system, but when it comes to installing and customizing the system, you're on your own, which, frankly, I like more. I like I like this method more than the way Void Linux does it. But I mean, beggars can't be choosers, so let's go ahead and actually uh, get into this. So I'm um, we'll going to go ahead and clear the screen, and I'm going to go ahead and test out my internet connection. I'm going to go ahead and ping gnu.org, and you see we're getting ping replies, so that means we're connected to the internet. So we can go ahead and continue. So uh, before I continue as well, I'm going to go ahead and run time date ctl set ETP true. And what this is going to do is this is just going to synchronize the clock on the system. So the date and time is 
correct because if you have a, a date or time that's off, it can mess with your system or it can mess with the system when it connects to the internet. So it's good to have that, you know, set. But now that we have that, you can go ahead and partition the disk. So uh, my disk is SDA right here, which is 20 gigs. So I'm going to do CF disk dev SDA. And I'm going to go ahead and do a DOS partition. Um, a legacy BIOS partition, as some people call it, but if you're using UFE or UFE, UEFI, <laughs> you would go ahead and choose GPT or whatever you need. But I'm going, I like to install everything using the legacy DOS and BIOS uh, system, so that's that's my preference. But let me go ahead and make one partition, make it 20 gigs, and make it bootable. And that's it. So. Go ahead and write it to the disk and quit. Okay, so now we have our single partition, SDA1. Now we can go ahead and uh, create a file system on the partition. And the, uh, we can do that by running mkfs.ext4. And basically, if, you, if you're not a lot of people I know aren't really equated with file systems that much, but the file system is it's basically it's basically the system the system that manages your files and your hard drive. So in this case this one is ext4, but there's other file systems you can choose from like ext3 or ext2, which I don't really recommend for regular use, but you can do that. Um betterfs. Um I don't think I don't think Linux actually supports ZFS fully, but there's ZFS, there's FAT. Fat32, VFAT, or not VFAT, yeah, VFAT, XFAT, basically a ton of other file systems you, you can choose from. It's really your choice when it comes to it, but I use ext4. So I'm going to go ahead and format SDA1 with ext4. And now we have our file system ready. So now we can go ahead and mount dev slash SDA1 to slash mount. Okay. Now that we have that, now that what that did is that mounted our um, our drive onto the folder slash mount. So now what we can do is we can run the command packstrap, which will actually, or packstrap slash mount, and this will basically install the packages that we need onto our drive. And so I'm going to, um, for that we're going to do base, which is the base package for the entire operating system. Uh, Linux, which is the Linux kernel, and Linux firmware, which is, of course, firmware for your machine. And it's going to go ahead and install all this. And this is gonna, this is going to take a um, this is going to take a moment. It's the Linux kernel isn't that big, or isn't that small, so this it can take a while. Luckily, I have luckily I have pretty fast internet right now. But some of you I know probably don't have the fastest internet out there. So this might take uh, anywhere from a couple seconds to if you have like really fast internet to maybe a couple hours. It really depends. You know, if you live out in the country, it's going to take a few hours. But yeah, for me, it should take less or it should take no more than a few minutes. So, but it's going to go ahead and install. As you can see, it's going to install all these packages up here. There's actually, it lists them out, but basically packages that you need for your system to run at all. And without them, you can't really have a system or you can't really run Arch Linux. So yeah, but mostly the base packages and then Linux kernel and Linux firmware. But it looks like this is almost done. Yeah, it's 83% of the way done. So it's really almost there. But, and actually this is a good time to tell you that about the Pac-Man package manager, because we're actually using Pac-Man to install all these packages, which um, this gives you a little bit of preview of Pac-Man before you use a system fully. But Pac-Man, in my opinion, is a great package manager. It's I love it. I I like X, the XBPS package manager for Void better, but Pac-Man is probably my second favorite, just because of how how easy to use and clean it is. But I think we're almost done installing. 
Almost. Oh, almost there. One second. Good. Take a moment. Okay, there we go. So now that we installed all the packages we need for now, um, we can go ahead and run. We can go ahead and run gen fs tab. And this this is going to do is this is going to generate your fs tab file, which is what your operating system uses to um, detect and mount your drive when it boots up. So this is very important if you want to actually boot your machine. But I'm going to give dash l for label mount, and we're going to go ahead and put that into mount etsy fs tab. Okay, and that's going to create our fs tab file. So now that we have all that set up, we can go ahead and sure root uh, into our um, in pro our in progress operating system. So here we are. It, we are now inside the all those packages we just installed. We are now inside that system. So we're going to go ahead and edit a few things. First things. First thing we're going to do while we're in here is set the time zone. And you're going to do that by, or you do ln slash sf, and you're going to create a symbolic link from uh, zone, wherever in zone info your um, time zone is. In this case, I'm America, Detroit. And then you're going to link that to Etsy local time. And that's going to create your, and that's going to set your time zone. And just to make sure, and this is going to sync your clock with your time zone, so that's done. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and edit. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit Etsy slash vocal dot gen. Oh, yeah, GI is in there. Uh, let's do nano. Do we have a text editor? No, we do not have a text editor. That's one thing I forgot. Um, uh, in fact, I can go and show you Pac-Man. Uh, but Pac-Man, you can go ahead. If you want to go ahead and install a package of Pac-Man, you can run Pac-Man dash dash S. And you can put in what package you want to install. In this case, I'm wanting to install VIP. So it's going to ask me what to install. Yep. And it's going to go ahead and install it. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and use that to um, edit locale gen. And if you live in America, like I do, uh, you can go down and uncomment, where is it? Um, en-us.utf8. And this is your, if you live in America, this should this should be your cat locale. But if you live in a different country or a different region, you can choose your uh, locale accordingly. Um, you should probably know what it is. But I'm gonna set that, and we're gonna go ahead and run locale gen to generate that locale. And I'll take a moment. There we go. Next, we're gonna edit Etsy slash lo It's look. Cal dot conf, if I'm correct, yes. And then we're going to put our language, in this case it's en underscore us dot utf8, it's the locale that we just chose. So there we go, well, we have that set, we're good. Next we're going to set our host name, and this, this can be whatever you want. It's I think there are some restrictions on characters and like how long it is and how or how short it is, but e, I'm not really sure what they are. But you really can't go wrong with just a like normal size host name. So we're gonna put that in Etsy host name if I remember. Yes. Okay. And I'm gonna call this mm, Archbox. There we go. That's my host name. There we go. Save that. So next, one second. I have I have some notes here for installing this. 
because I have, haven't quite memorized it yet. But uh, next, we're going to install some necessary packages, um, which I already did one, which was Vim. But or you can install whatever text editor you like. I my preferred one is Vim. But um, I'm going to install a few more packages. Um, if you're going to be using the if you're going to be using this as a normal system, you probably want to install DOS FS tools. This lets you this lets you modify and write to um, uh, you or drives formatted in FAT, FAT32, XFAT, formats like that. Um, so that's real useful to have. I don't need it installed. But um, ooh, one thing you probably want to install is your microcode for the CPU you're running. Unless you have a very specific configuration, uh, it's a good idea to have this. If you have an Intel CPU, you would install an Intel U code. If you have an AMD CPU, you just replace Intel AMD. But this is sometimes necessary to actually boot your system, so don't forget that. So if you have an Intel one, do Intel, but if you have AMD, you can do AMD, you go install those, but I don't need those because I'm in a virtual machine. Um, also, if you need to, if you need an, uh, if you need network or wireless or network managing, you can install um, program for that for that. Uh, I sometimes use study PA supplement. Um, which works well enough, but I also use Network Manager, which is also another choice you can do. But cool. some of the packages we would want to install are mandb, uh, and man pages, and as the name applies, this will let you read and read, write, and view man pages. So this is pretty critical if you want to learn how certain programs work. But um, there's also one big package that I definitely recommend a lot of people install is base devel, or it stands for base development, but base devel. And this will actually install a lot of packages, um, useful packages like um, here. Useful, useful packages like, um, trying to see what the, which ones there are. Okay, like uh, awk, gcc, grep, grof, gzip, make, where else? Said sudo. Sudo is a big one. Um, but yeah, it'll install all those packages that you need. Um, and I definitely, I definitely recommend installing this um, because this, this gets a lot of the um, very important programs, as, as I told you, uh, out of the way. And uh, it should only take a second. There we go. And while we're at it, we're going to install our bootloader. And with Arch Linux, you actually have your choice of bootloader. You can choose, I think the recommended one is Grub, which is like almost every Linux distribution nowadays uses Grub. But there's also other ones like, I think it's Lilo, Lilo. it's L-I-L-O. Um, it's the Linux, it's Linux something loader, but that's a good choice. There's, there's a few other ones I can't remember, but you have your choice when it comes to bootloaders, but I'm gonna go ahead and install grub because it's it's really the most general bootloader out there and it's the most compatible with most systems so i think people won't, won't complain about that so um yeah that and um go ahead and now that we got that out of the way we can go ahead and run mk init cpio and this will this will go ahead and generate um, a few things that you need for a system, mostly um, uh, things like init RAM, your initial RAM file system, or init RAM FS. Um, just a few technical things I'm pretty sure you guys don't care about, <laughs> but it's nice to put uh, to run at. Uh, next, we're going to actually set our system password. So you can go ahead and run passwd, and it'll ask you for a password. I'm going to do the most secure password I can think of, which is password. And do that again. There we go. So we have now set our root password. And at this point, we can go ahead and install grub onto our system and make it actually bootable. So go ahead and list this. OK, so we're going to go ahead and do grub install and target uh, i386-pc. And 
dev slash sba. Uh, but you're installing Grub. If you're doing what I'm doing and using a like legacy or legacy uh, bio system, uh, you're going to want to do i386 PC for your target. But if you're using a newer UEFI or EFI, whatever term is used for it, uh, system for a target, instead of putting i386, you're going to want to do, I think it's x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. It's, it's in the Arch Wiki somewhere, but also I forgot to mention. ArchWiki is a very good resource to have when you're installing this. They have a whole installation wiki. It's a great thing to have, but uh, this is just me installing it. Um, and also one other important note when you're installing Grub is you don't want to install it to your partition. So I don't want to install this to SD1. I want to install it to the drive itself, which is SDA. So remember that because you can easily mess it up like I have, like I have before. But Go ahead and install Grub. This should only, like I said, take a second. This is all a really fast process, to be honest. It doesn't take that long. Unlike Windows, which takes a long time to install. Linux is usually very quick about installation times. But yeah, this should only take a moment. Taking a bit longer than anticipate, anticipated. But I guess that's to be expected with this very slow hard drive I have. Um, yeah. There we go. Okay. And when it finishes, you should see installation finish, no error reported. That means everything's good. If you get an error, then retry. I know what's wrong. It's up to you to actually install it. I'm not. I'm not here to hold your hand, but um, I'm just here to show you the general process and pique your interest in how to actually install this. But now we can go ahead and make the config file for Grub. So we can go run Grub mk config, and we can um, do dash o, and we're going to redirect, which is going to redirect that to slash boot. Grub, grub.cfg. And that's going to write the file to grub.cfg. And it's going to take a moment. Hopefully, this should be quicker than the actual grub installation. Yeah, there we go. It will reinstall. And that's it. That's, um, we're basically done with our installation at this point. Uh, you can, do, you can do a few more things. Like, if you want to install a few more packages while you're at it, with Pac-Man, you can go ahead and do that, but I'm not going to do. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Um, I don't have anything to install, so I uh, can go ahead and exit our um, our drive, and we're going to go ahead and unmount it and unmount dash r slash mount, and it's going to take a moment. There we go to unmount it, and we go ahead and power off the system, and when we reboot, hopefully should be able to boot back in into our new installation. So run power off. There we go. Okay, so I'll go back to this. And um, when you boot when you boot back up, make sure to remove your install medium from your machine. Like I am. And if you're like if you if you're doing this on real hardware, like uh, just pull the USB drive out when it's off and just boot it back up. But we should get a system that boots. Yep. And as you can see, one moment. There we go. We have our login screen, which is very minimal, but it works. So I'm gonna log in as root and put in my password, which is password. And your system is up and running. And you can go up, you can go a lot of ways or a lot of different directions from this. You can go ahead and install, like I said with Void Linux, you can go ahead and install a graphical environment. You can install tons of packages, whatever you want. It's, that's what I love about these like minimal Linux systems. You can do whatever you want. You can play with it. You can mess around, break it, destroy it, create amazing things. It's really a great thing to have. Uh, in fact, I recommend the first thing you should, would probably do would probably be to update the system, which is 
if you run pacman dash syu, oh wait, ah oh yeah, almost forgot. Uh, no, <laughs> no internet, but um, that, that's why you should install an equip manager, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, but that's, yeah, that's how you install um, Arch Linux. Um, pretty straightforward compared to other, um, other minimal distributions I know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice having a minimal Linux distribution. So that's installing Arch Linux and I'll see you whenever.